Today I got a 2012 Camaro with a no AC complaint. The customer put in a bottle of R134A in this thing and guess what? She's still not working. So I got my gauges hooked up and I have some temperature clamps set up at the inlet and outlet of the expansion valve. We can see our gauge pressure is reading 30 on the low, 190 on the high. We got 46 degrees on the outlet of the expansion and right around 100 degrees on the inlet. And we can see inside that we are blowing pretty warm. And right now the ambient temp is at 68. So for the dash to be blowing at 90 degrees is a big hint of what the actual problem is. And it's not going to be refrigerant charge. But here's the thing, without going on a tangent, adding one of those refrigerant cans can cause a lot of damage because they not only add refrigerant, especially if you don't know if you're actually low, but they also a lot of times add oil. They're gonna have sealers sometimes, and depending on your method of adding it, you're pushing in air into the system as well, all of which are not great for your system. So if all the ports closed, except for the one, we're set to the front facing air or at the lowest speed. We can now see we're at a more reasonable temperature, still pretty high, but a lot better. So less airflow, more cooling. So we got the heater hoses that go to the core clamped off. Now let's go inside. And we can see a lot colder. Not as cold as we want it to be, but still, we know that we're set to fully cold. But coolant flow is being directed through the heater hoses. So what's going on here? Why did clamping the heater hoses make the cab colder? Well, I pulled up this diagram to understand how this HVAC system works. We can see that we have two main modules in play and that they communicate to each other over a communication line. And more importantly, we see that the temperature is controlled through a door actuator, not a typical old fashioned heater valve. So that's important to know. So coolant is always going to be circulating through that heater core and that door is going to open and close depending on the position of our actuator or on our AC control panel. So if we had a heater valve, then we zone in on that heater valve. We check, make sure it's receiving the command to close and if it's actually closing. But since we have a temperature door, we're going in a slightly different direction. We're still going to zone in on it and seeing if it has the proper command. So first we're gonna start off an all module scan and we can see here we have no codes in any of the modules. Then I'm going to pull up the HVAC PIDs and I can see that the coolant temp is extremely low, which big sign there. But now we can see our door commands and we can see that the desired temperature door is at zero. The door position count is also at zero and we can see that they follow each other pretty well. But we can also see that it says the left temperature door actuator the learn status is not run. So let's keep that in mind. And here I went through a bi-directional test. You can see up top, I set it to fully cold and we can see that the desired is zero and the count matches. So we know that zero is the cold command and that the computer at least sees that it's reaching that command. I then went in to go recalibrate the actuator and learn the position because why not? I'm here anyway. And here are the warnings, yada yada. Make sure you read this stuff actually, it's very important. You might prick something. And now we can see that our door is in the complete status for the learn. And guess what? It's still broken. So that didn't do anything. So let's summarize what we know. We know that if we clamp off the coolant lines going to the heater core, 
that we now have cold air in the cab, meaning cold air from the evaporator is being pulled against the heater core. And that is warming it up, which reduces the engine temperature, which is why we see 170 degrees engine temp after the vehicle's been running for a while. We also know that the temperature door is receiving a command and it's actually moving because we can measure that command with the scan tool. So the only possibility here is that that door is either broken or it's off track, but either way, the duct has to come down so we can get access to that temperature door and see what we're going to have to need to do to repair this issue. Or that's what I said at first until I did a little bit of research into the parts required and how much effort is needed to repair this. That's when I came across this being a common issue and people have a trick where you pull out the evaporator temperature sensor, you stick a boroscope in there and you can actually see the door. So I did this. see right there where the door should have been is sheared off and I think I see the door sitting down at the bottom by the heater core. So I talked to the customer, explained them the situation and they opted for the cheaper option of installing a manual heater control valve themselves in the heater lines going to the heater core. So this way they just shut the heat off when they want the AC 